Welcome back guys to another wonderful day here at the gruesome twosome garage As you can see we're getting a little more done on the roll cage here. So We added another bar here If you watch the last video, this is kind of where we left off and now we're trying to get the seat mounted We got a little difficulty here as you see We cut a lot out because these seats are pretty wide. They're Corbeau Baja XPS or something like that I'll put a link in the description, but they're going to take up a lot of room here. So essentially the seat pretty much comes right to the transfer case. So it's a little tight in there. I uh, figured some stuff out, but let me show you what I did first. So in the back here, two pieces of angle iron, and that's gonna go to the floor. Now I think the floor is a pretty good spot for it because the floor is tied into everything tied into the frame rails, unibody rails, and it's also tied into the whole roll cage, the two by six on the outside as well, the to the body, to the floor. So I think the floor is pretty strong. Once we seal all this back up, after we get the seat mounted in, it'll be even stronger. In the back here, hard to see, but there's our pieces of angle iron on the two sides. That'll get welded to the floor. Now, the tricky part. This is how close we are to our transfer case. I don't know, about a good inch. I can get my hand in there. So, a little close, but is what it is. This is a very wide seat, and of course the Cherokee is not accommodating it very nicely, but we made room. So, if you can see down there, there's two more little angle iron tabs I made. Cut out, whatever. And this piece is what's going to hold it. So this is going to go down. I'll show you better underneath, but if you can see, there's a bar of uh, inch and three quarter going across the frame rails on the inside. And what that is doing is holding our anti-wrap bar in here. So we're gonna weld this piece of pipe up to that tab under the seat. Weld the tab onto the flat there. There it is. So we just put a piece of tube up. Try to get in there, you can kind of see it. I'll show you when I take the seat back out. But we also had to make a mount for the other side. You can see it's welded a little bit there, but this floor is iffy. But we're going to put another piece like we did there of 2x2, two two, and we'll support the seat off of that. So that's kind of just temporary. As you can see here, we put some tabs for the seat belt. Got the two in the back for the uh, shoulder harness. This is for the lap. Another one over here for the lap. And under here, we're going to have to put one for the... Uh, crotch strap whatever you want to call it but I think I'm gonna tie that in to the piece of two by two that I'm gonna put across here so but for now we got the seat mounted in everything is tacked we just got to add one more bar from here to here give it a little more strength and then this side will be done I'll pull the seat out weld everything up and we can move on to the next side I put the door back on quick because I quickly realized this guy is going to be in the pathway of the door inside of it and we're going to have to do a little cutting. So I got this fit up, ready to tack in. I've hacked my door out a little bit, just a minimal cut, nothing crazy. I just wanted to make sure I could still open and close the window and I can. So time to tack this piece in. There it is. A little more bracing, a little more strength there. I'm very happy with that. So now this cockpit driver area is completely done. All tacked together. Now it's time to take the seat out because that thing's getting destroyed in here. And the longer it's in here while we're building everything, the worse it's going to get. So we're going to pull this out and I'll show you the brackets because now they're all going to be attached and we'll weld them up. There it is. That's our back mount. Front mount here, a little questionable. We're gonna have to beef it up a bit. We're gonna have to put a hole here and some kind of attachment for the crotch strap of the five point harness. And here is our other mount for the front in the, uh, in the fun spot over here. So I'm gonna weld these up. And uh, I don't know, it's looking like it's gonna be hard to take the transfer case out. So we might end up adding those bungs in so we can actually remove this piece of pipe 
I have another set of these, so I might just weld them in. I don't know yet, but it's pretty close. I'm not really worried about the T case moving because all the mounts, I don't know if you can see in there, they're all the uh, really hard, almost solid mounts. A little bit of movement, but it shouldn't twist that much. So we'll see what happens. We can always cut it out. Here they are. We got our rough stuff shock tabs here. And I was gonna show you how to set this up, but of course I forgot to film. So what I do, whether it's the right way or not, I jack the axle up all the way and I find out exactly where I want my full bump to be, which is how far your axle comes up, you know, making sure your tire's not hitting anything, making sure you have clearance with the frame rail and the axle, because we got the truss, an Artec truss on here and making sure all these tie rods and drag links and bars aren't hitting each other. So what we did was we jacked it up. We figured out exactly where it's gonna be, where our tire's not gonna hit here, hit rub this, and we tacked them in. So that is our full bump, whatever you wanna call it. This is extremely important, guys, because if you don't measure full bump, even if you're just doing coils and stuff, measure your full bump because Things can happen. I took my Jeep to Roush after slapping the front end together a few years ago, and I didn't measure for full bump. You know, what do you really need full bump for? That's what the fenders and the tires are for, right? Typical XJ thing. But guess what happened? I never measured, and my track bar was not positioned correctly. It was a couple holes, well, it was parallel with the tie rod, or the drag link, which was just fine, but it was too high, and when I went up, it dented my oil pan a little, and it did not sound good after that. Well, we got our passenger seat in. Got a little creative down there. But, uh, it'll work. Now we just gotta do a little copy and paste again. This bar on the other side. So that's a 25 degree bend. About nine and a half inches here, about 23 to there. We just gotta figure out the angles of the notching and get it cut. After some notching, a couple re-notches, figuring out the angles, we got this thing ready to roll. So it's gonna sit there, right there, and uh, match the other side pretty much. So let's tack. There we go, boys and girls. We got our seat belt harness tabs in. See back there, but there's two like that. Yeah, there we go, behind the seat. And we still have to add one in the middle there, but we'll get to that. So this side is essentially done. We got Jeff fooling around over there. We're getting ready to put our steering in. Pretty simple stuff, guys. This is just a uh, steering kit from Jegs, a steering column kit. And it just comes with a piece of an aluminum, some bushings, the shaft itself and a u-joint and we just got to make it work in this jeep over here so there's our hole we got to plop our seat in and figure this guy out we got our driver's seat in both of our seats i'm pretty happy with them this one is a little you know tilted in so maybe i'll mess with that and fix it we'll see but it's time to do the steering jeff's already been fooling around with this kit but it's pretty simple. This is the uh, aluminum, whatever you call them, I guess you would call it. We got ourselves a mounting kit for it. These little sleeves, there it is. They, these are all Jags parts, little firewall seal, U-joint, shafts. And this is my NRG quick release hub. And they give you a three bolt adapter. So the first thing we're gonna do is take this rod the longer one but and we're going to tack it on here so i can sit in there with the steering wheel in the column here and really figure out where i need it to be for myself these here are part of a kit that you can mount this steering column 
It's the uh, Jags mounting kit, and you need these because this tube here is aluminum, and we want to weld it to our steel cage. So there's these little clamps. They give you a little, couple pieces of bar, and now we're going to fit that up and tack this thing in. So we got our first one uh, tacked in here. Just They give you these little pieces of pipe, and I just made a little brace there, and now we're making our second one here. So you can see this one goes up to a piece of angle iron, actually, that I had my old dash mounted to. And now we're gonna make the other side that goes up to one of these bolts that holds the pedal assembly in. So here it is, all welded together. Very simple, should hold it together pretty well. So now that we got that done, we're gonna tack it on there. And then we gotta work on getting all the linkage set up down here. So we gotta put a U-join in and we gotta cut one out of the factory steering column. I'll show you. So this is our old steering column here. And what we did was we stole this guy off the end. So this is attached on there. This goes to the steering box and we need this to adapt our new steering column to it. So, so there is our shaft and we put, got our first U-joint in. That's part of the kit, comes with that U-joint. And here we're using the uh, factory one as I showed you. So now we just got to measure for one last piece of shaft. There it is, boys and girls. Column is in, steering wheel is on, straight. And we have the rest of the shaft complete. Really like this kit, very easy to put together, pretty straightforward. What do you think, Jeff? I, I, it's not bad, you know. I, it, when we first got it, it looked a little chintzy, but now that it's all together, it's pretty tough. Yeah, and uh, much cleaner look than the factory one that has all the plastic and nice stuff stripped off of it. So that's taken care of. Seats are in, ready for harnesses. Tune in next week, and we're going to be putting some frame stiffeners on this thing and start tubing the whole back of it. Getting one step closer to getting this thing on the streets and the rocks.